attention. During this podcast, you may experience eureka moments or feel slightly empowered, inspired, energized, and ready to start up at a moment's notice with today's host, Cullen Pope on Silicon Beach Radio. Welcome to the Melbourne Silicon Beach Podcast. Hi, welcome back to Silicon Beach Radio. Cullen here as we go into our SEO series part six here. We're joined by Rajiv. For those of you here for the first time, welcome. If you want to go back to part five, you can get more details on Rajiv's work. He's been working in SEO for 17 years. And so, Rajiv, uh, the last time we were together, we were uh, talking about keywords, uh, really keyword strategy, I suppose is what I would call it. What are we going to be talking about now when we look at, um, I guess, part six of this SEO series? In this part, uh, we would be looking more at mobile, mobile optimization, how Google ranks a website on mobile, etc. Okay, brilliant. Now, we did touch briefly on uh, mobile, I guess, in part five. But when we think about I don't know, when I think about mobile, I can always remember, you know, going to my friend's house and saying, you know, this is many years ago and going, look, you know, I've got a new website and then sort of bring it up on the mobile. <laughs> it just looked awful and thinking, oh, wow, disaster and having a good laugh about it. But of course, now, you know, you know, it's terrifying to do such a thing. Do you want to just tell us a little bit, I guess, how did we get here? How did we get to, uh, I guess, what you're calling mobile first or, or what is known as the mobile first index is a good place for us to start? Yes, I think it was 2016 when mobile searches overtook desktop searches. And after that, the mobile queries and search and et cetera, accessing the web through mobile has been increasing every year. Okay. And so, I guess there's that whole thing uh, now where uh, I guess Google has officially turned on. Uh, is it, I guess people are calling it the Google first index. Is that right? But it's it's called a few other things. But I guess it sort of only happened very recently, didn't it? So Google announced the mobile first index in uh, November 2016. And what that means is uh Google will use the mobile version of your page for indexing and ranking. And recently, many of my clients and many of the webmasters have been shifted onto the mobile first indexing. So they would have got a, a notification on their search console. Yeah, I have seen that actually for a couple of mine, uh, which was encouraging, I guess. And also, I know that when you're in search console now, you can ask Google to fetch as mobile as well. Yes, I think... You could do that uh, quite a while back as well. Yeah, that's right. So um, if people want to choose that, if people go into their search console and they want to, uh, you know, run that fetch as Google, what results is that going to give them in terms of the sort of key elements they want to think about? So whenever you do a render and fetch, so you can only fetch or you can render the page. And so if you're using a mobile agent, Google will show you, okay, how the bot sees the page, if all the resources have been loaded, how it looks at JavaScript or your title tags, et cetera, et cetera, and then how the Google bot would render the page for your user. And I think that's pretty important to see how Google kind of renders the page or the Google bot sees the page. And just, uh, I guess, it might seem obvious for some of our listeners as to why Google is uh, on this mobile journey, but do you want to just... Explain very briefly why Google has suddenly gone mobile all out. So Google has been giving us hints and telling us, okay, mobile is becoming more important since some years, I think three years now. Uh, They had announced a mobile first index two years back, and they've been periodically saying, okay, keep optimizing for mobile, make your sites more responsive. And we have seen an explosion in uh, mobile phone usage and the speeds have gone really high in the internet speed, 4G, et cetera. So everyone is able to access the internet through the mobile devices now. Okay, brilliant. And when we um, think about how a mobile is affected by, I guess, the search engines um, and when we think about, you know, different kind of smartphones and uh, things, what should we be thinking about in terms of how we 
improve our mobile indexing, improve our website for mobile? A couple of things. So speed is one of the key factors now. And uh, Google had said, I think, a couple of months back that in July there would be a big speed update. And so now your mobile, so speed was already a factor uh, in search rankings for desktop, but now it has become a factor on mobile sites as well. And so your speed has to be really good because people might not have good connections. And if you don't have good speed besides Google downgrading your rankings, you might have a very high bounce rate. And so I guess, um, you know, there's some huge changes now that are occurring because I guess for some people, let's say that your website was reasonably well put together and your website was easy to navigate and Google loved all the technical aspects of your website and you had great content and keywords and images and videos and you got all of these everything, things, yeah. everything yeah. right. But your website's Fixed. slow because your hosting <laughs> is is questionable. Um, I guess that must be happening to people as well at the moment with part of this. Do you want to explain to people where hosting fits into the speed story? Fantastic question, Cullen. So hosting plays a critical role in your website speeds. A good hosting, a fast host will ensure that your website loads up in under a second. A slow host will load up your website in say three to five seconds. So this slow website speed would definitely affect your rankings and also your user experience because many of your users will bounce back. They will not wait for the page to load and that will have an indirect effect on your SEO as well. Yeah, that's right. And so I suppose um, it feels like to me, in a sense, if I can say such a thing, uh, is that Google is obviously very helpful in many respects, but it is putting up some new challenges for people in terms of just other things that they now have to think of. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, the challenges have always been there with SEO and trying to rank your website. And, and I think uh, it's always been challenging for small and medium businesses because the big ones have enough money to hire technical SEO consultants and throw money on content and link building, etc. But the small businesses and startups have always struggled. And obviously, as we go mobile, as the number of devices have increased, the complexity has definitely increased. Okay. And so what t top tips... Uh, can we give people, um, after that kind of scary story about all the challenges, it sounds kind of ugly, um, that are going to help them along, medium to small business, small startups, people just getting out, what are the top tips that we can give that will help them kind of uh, compete a little bit uh, with these uh, bigger brands who have got you know huge amounts of money and time and effort and people? What are some top tips they can take away? So the easiest and the top one would be, Whenever you are uh, making a website or you're using WordPress, get a responsive theme. So most of the themes would say their themes are responsive or not. Uh, it is very crucial to have a responsive theme to start with. Once you have a responsive theme, make sure that uh, whatever content is being shown on your desktop site is the content being shown on your mobile site. So say if you decide to hide certain key content on your mobile site because of, say, UX or some other consideration, and your website is on mobile first indexing, Google will not be aware of that content, and that will negatively affect your rankings. Now, a good example of that might be, uh, I was speaking to somebody recently, and they had one of those... <laughs> I guess those kind of popular new websites a lot of startups have got where there's a little video moving around the background yeah. and it all looks kind of uh, pretty... Uh, I know what I, you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> you're kind of drawn in by these amazing images, all this incredible video, people drinking lagers in the background. You go, hey, that looks fun. I want to I work for that company. <laughs> uh, we all know those websites. But in actual fact, you don't want that playing on your mobile, do you? I, I think that's a really bad idea. A video, like, and that's too on the background, and that kind of doesn't help the user experience or give them any valuable content about the company. You're just wasting bandwidth. That's right. And so particularly on mobile, a bad idea. Very bad idea. Yeah, but on the desktop, it's kind of cool. 
look, I'm not that f- big fan of videos playing in the background. I would still have a decent sized image. So image can be compressed and you might get a good image for, say, 40 kilobytes. Yeah, but okay. A, you know, a video would be a couple of megs. Yep, sure. So even one or two meg yep. makes a big difference how your website loads up. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about that briefly because I know with mobile um, image compression, video compression, huge now. Um, I personally have spent some time <laughs> getting people to help me with image compression. And and um, I just – if it's okay, I want to touch briefly on the speed thing. Yeah. Um, I use – the GT speed test, you're familiar with that. The, um, you know, when you're doing it, there's a series of different tools you can use for mobile speed tests. We're going to put some links in here to some of those speed tests. You use a couple of different speed tests. Do you want to tell us about those? First starting point would be the Google's mobile friendly test. So that's not a speed test, but it tells you, okay, your page is mobile friendly. Yep. The second part would be going to page speed insights by Google. So then it would give you a page speed score and it will also show if your website has been optimized in terms of code, in terms of JavaScript. My third stop would be Pingdom. Yep, okay. So Pingdom would give me a real-life scenario of how a website is loading up and how long it takes from different servers. So if, if, say, I'm accessing the site from Melbourne or I'm accessing the site from New York, the speeds would be different. So how different is that speed? And uh, I would use Lighthouse. Yeah, so I've been using Lighthouse lately, and there's not too many. I mean, there's there's not too many people um, that I know that are using it, and um, I have found it very handy. Although I've got to say, with the Lighthouse thing, I'm not convinced on the SEO score. When I see somebody, <laughs> you know, you use Lighthouse and it says give us an SEO score of eighty, I'm like, no way. I've got clients' websites which are mostly on ninety nines and hundreds. Wow. Uh, but you're right. You just can't rely on Lighthouse because Lighthouse gives you a very basic and fundamental overview of yeah, your SEO. Yeah, that's right. But it's a good starting point. So as we discussed, just what's two two of the metrics that you pull out of there? Bearing in mind, uh, as much as we know the SEO thing is not really, you know. But you said you said when you get a really low one, fortunately I haven't seen them any lighthouses that I've used lately. But when you get a low one, you said that um that's definitely a warning. Yeah. Oh yes, that's that's a warning that some basic fundamental SEO principles are not being followed. Okay, so that's a great clue for people. And then the next thing you said was best pa- practices as well in Lighthouse. Yeah, yep. the best practices section and also the performance section. And in best practices, what is the, um, I guess, just one or two key metrics that people can look for in there? Uh, in the performance tab, it would show you some developmental or code issues like JavaScript or scrolling, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, brilliant. And and look, for I guess for a lot of people who aren't having anything to do with their JavaScript, at least they can run this report, send it off to their developer and say, look, can you just you know, fix up a bit of this JavaScript or have a look at this Lighthouse report. So you give it to your developer and he'll he'll be able to do something or she'll be able to do something for you, yeah? Definitely. definitely. Okay, perfect. Thanks. And we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, AntStand. Introducing AntStand, the most portable laptop stand in the world. So portable, in fact, you'll forget you're carrying it. Turn your laptop into a monitor with Ant Stand. The Ant Stand will hold an 11 inch MacBook Air all the way up to a 17 inch MacBook Pro for maximum versatility. The unique design allows the maximum airflow to keep your laptop cool while raising the screen to eliminate neck and shoulder pain. Available in bamboo, visit AntStand.com to get yours today. That's A N T S T A N D. Welcome back, and let's pick up where we've left off. Okay, brilliant. Look, thanks for that. So just a couple of quick questions. Uh, So Damien says, we have a new website coming up for our company. Uh, I'm using SEMrush and Moz. 
what should I be tracking the whole time as we move from the old website to the new website so I can keep an eye on all of the SEO details as we transition onto the new website? Bearing in mind, it could just be switched on one Friday. Damien is doing a migration, so they might be migrating uh, from one platform to another or might be changing some core code or content. Yep, going to sort of a whole new website design or something. Yep. Possible, yeah. So, Damien, the first thing is obviously, which is very obvious, you have to monitor the traffic and your rankings. So traffic can be monitored through your Google Analytics. Ranking for keyword ranking, you can use SEMrush or Moz or Ahrefs, any of these tools. And you can set up a keyword ranking with all your tracked keywords and keep a keep an eye on them. Besides this, I would also stress that you keep an eye on your uh, Google Search Console because Google Search Console can throw up a lot of errors when you're doing a migration. And it would be really critical for you to fix them quickly. Yeah, actually, just on that note, uh, I noticed that with the new Google Console that's come in, uh, I've been getting some alerts from Google Console where they sort of finding things. Seems to be a bit of an automation coming in now on the new Search Console. Have you seen that where they say, oh, by the way, this is happening? I've been getting sort of the odd email. That's something yeah. new. Yes, you're right. Search Console does alert you to uh, issues relating to your index coverage or if it finds too many errors. Uh, which is great, I think. Yeah, I think it's great. So, okay, good. And so Damien also says, oh, yeah. So thinking about the new website going live, should we be updating um, duplicate metas now uh, before the new site goes live or or after? Um, yeah. So if you are going to make a lot of changes and because you are developing a um, new version of the website, uh, my recommendation would, would be to make all the changes at one go on a staging server. Yeah. So so don't do it before you're switching on. Do all the changes, the metas, whatever you need to change on a staging server. And then once you're happy with everything, you go live. Okay, brilliant. Um, and look, Damien's asked another question, but I think we're going to leave that for next time because he's talking about international SEO. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, brilliant. All right, well, look, we'll wrap up on that. Just a reminder, Rajiv, where can people uh, find your work, get in touch with you? You can visit my website. That's www.seoauditing, A-U-D-I-T-I-N-G, seoauditing.com.au. Or you can also email me at rajiv, R-A-J-I-V, at seoauditing.com.au. All right, brilliant. So look, thanks for joining us, everybody. That's the wrap here, um, part six SEO with uh, Cullen and Rajiv. So just a reminder, if you want to send us your questions, you can do that at Cullen, C-U-L-L-E-N, at eatmag, E-A-T-T-M-A-G dot com. Send us your questions and uh, we'll come back to you as soon as we can. If we can't answer some questions at the time because we've received them after the podcast has come out, we're going to try and post them in an update into the post that goes out with this. Just a shout out to everybody reminding you that uh, Silicon Beach is also streaming, Silicon Beach Radio streaming live on uh, the first Thursday of every month, that is at 6.30 p.m. Melbourne Australian time. And you can get more details of our work on our new website, which is Silicon Beach Oz, that's O-Z dot net. And uh, from that website, you'll be able to log in with your meetup.com login and create a profile. There's some work going on around that website at the moment. So just um, wanted to make you aware of that. And we look forward to you catching us next time. So thanks for joining us, Rajiv. Thank you, Cullen. Cheers. And we're going out with a track called Humid, one of my favorite tracks to come out of the Jimmy Yucca Band. And you can get details on jimmyyucca.com. Some great tracks there, particularly if you're working around, if you're at your desk, you want to stand up, jump around, you can jump around to the sound of tracks. So thank you very much to jimmyyucca.com. And thank you to our supporters. Thanks for looking after us. And we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.
from uh, Silicon Beach Radio today. Oh. And you can, you can, oh. I'm glad it all wasn't This makes here. so much more sense <laughs> now. That's what we're speaking on. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Silicon Beach has radio? Yeah. Uh, Wait, you're yeah. recording. This is part of Silicon Beach also has a business model. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I should look out here this bit. <laughs>